Hello everybody and welcome once again to Pneumatograph to Pressure Eyes and Minecraft 116. So today we are going to, let's have a look at the aphorism tiles, uh, look at the security station mostly. But first I'd ha like to have a quick look at the armour colour and also putting a suicide puzzle piece into the programmable controller. So let's get started. So if we st enable the um, core components by it's programmed to alt a in my case you now have a new button called colors so with colors you can change the color of your different pieces so for example here this is the head piece we could actually select the body piece but that doesn't work so well because it's enchanted let's select the, f the feet here and then we can give these a new color so for instance if we want them to be greenish then all we need to do is to turn down the red and the and the blue and then they become a little bit green this is on the outside of the so actually that's not a bad colour, we'll leave them at 45 each or thereabouts if I can get it. And this is 150, which I think is max. Oh no, it's not max, it's in the middle, you can't see it, it's exactly underneath the here, so you can't see it so well. And then you can click this one here and then you can copy those colours to the other parts of your armour like this. So now you can see what I'm looking like. Um, so when you save this now, you have to save it. If you don't save it, it doesn't work. So you can then have a look at yourself and you've got a nice green tinge to the outside part of the armour. There's two parts, the inside and the outside. And the lens, that was the other one of those. So let's have a look at the lens again. So at the moment I've got it set up to being blue, but of course let's make it, let's make it sort of purpley. Is it blue and red? Yes. That's actually magenta, let's have a look at that one, save that. Oh, we've got this magenta, actually that doesn't look too bad does it? So that's how you can do the armour colours. So now let's go and have a look at putting this program with a suicide puzzle piece into the programmable controller. So the reason I'm covering this, and this is a very simple program, just starts, wait for five seconds and then commit suicide. That's already programmed in as it happens, so we just take it out. And then we can put this into the programmable controller at the back here. Um, and see what happens. So first of all, you want to configure your sides. So at the moment, I've got this. This it was shoved out at the bottom. That's probably not the best slot, but because it's on the ground, we'll just disable this one altogether, and we'll just use the back piece here uh, to throw the programmable slot out. And we simply put this into here like this, and then wait for five seconds. In fact, you should even be able to debug it if I turned on the debug, which I haven't done. And it makes that great noise <laughs> and you'll find that the drone is now in here and it's not in, no longer in here so it's basically ejected it now that's great for doing things like the greenhouse because the greenhouse is two phases really well three phases you could clear the area out one phase second phase you could build the greenhouse and the third phase you could actually then harvest the crops so that's that one so now let's go and have a look at doing the security station I've actually got one set up here. Well, let's first of all, let's build one of those things. So the recipe for the security station is this one. And it's fairly straightforward. It's just two grey dye, one black stain glass pane, two turbine rotors, one PCB, and two pieces of plastic. Sort of expensive, I suppose. Uh, so let's make, this up. let's make that up first of all. We need the rotors to start with. So what I do to make rotors, I'll do it like this. If we collect the bit those and just do it like this, and you get your two rotors that you need. And I think that's all we need to do the security station. Let's click that in place, yep, and then do that. So now we're going to put the security station down somewhere. Let's put it down here, beside these other ones. And you right click it, and you've got here immediately, you've got problems. So add a diagnostic subroutine. So in fact, what I should really have done is to set those, to get the programs for these already set up. Um, I'll be back in a second. So the diagnostic subroutine is this one here. So let's just get this programmed up. So we need four red dye and four pieces of plastic and a chest, and I've forgotten the red dye. Um, have we got any red dye around here? I've got the other dye, I've got four of the other dyes. So we'll make the other bits up while we're waiting, and I'll do that one. So we need, no, we'll go and get that one. I'll be back in a second. That literally didn't take a second. And here we've got the red dye here like this. Um, so now we can make up this this diagnostic subroutine. So four pieces of plastic, one chest and four of these. And then make this up. So let's go back to the security station here. Let's open this tab up and push this one into it. In fact, it's a good place to put it anywhere you like, but that'll do. So now we need a network I.O. port. The network I.O. port is this one here. So let's do that. 
Um, so we need four capacitors, four iron, and a chest again. So we'll do that one very straightforward. Put that into here. Now this is generally the, as it's tell me, required for a security station. This is the entry point for hack attacks. Um, so we're going to put this, let's open this tab up so we'll put it in and see what happens then. So it says add a network registry. Now the network registry is this one here, which is lime dye plastic and a chest, almost identical to the uh, IO port, wrong, wrong place. Try again. And then put that into the security station like this. And this is the destination. This is the target for the hackers. So we're going to set it up as simple as this, like that. And then it'll tell me what we've got. So we need, they must be connected with network nodes. And the network node is this one here. And this makes 16. So we need transistors, purple dye, and a chest. Well, I've got the bits prepared for that one, I think. So let's get those done. So then you need to connect these together. And all you have to do to connect them together is like that. And that would then connect these together. So there we have a test and we can then test whether or not this works. So we start here and we left click this one to start the hack. And then when that's reached this one here, we then right click it to fortify it and then select this one. Huh. And my hack failed. As you see, I didn't succeed in hacking this at all. So <laughs> there we are. That was that done. Of course. So let's try that again. Um, Let's test this again. So I think I have to be quicker this time. So let's just try clicking this one here like this. Fortifying it and clicking the next one down here. And that's done. Hack successful. So we've died we've successfully hacked this. So the risk the risk is here is 30%. So that works. Now you can actually make this a lot stronger by putting in different upgrades into it. So we can put an entity tracker in here. So for example, if we look at the status here, so the intruder detection chance is 30% and the coverage is five square meters. Uh, and it says the system is secure. Well, it's not very secure because we, we hacked it in the second attempt. So let's actually, let's, let's come out of here now. Uh, it's night time, I'll have a quick sleep. <laughs> and we'll do this with a different user. So I'll see you in a few seconds as my other user. So here I am as my other user. Uh, let's put the security helmet, the pneumatic helmet on. You need a pneumatic helmet on to be able to hack anything. Now, I haven't got any upgrades on this, so it takes a reasonable amount of time. And I haven't got my, the other armor on, so I'm very slow. In fact, it's sort of makes quite a difference when you got used to the speed upgrades, the other one. You get quite confused about it. So here we are. Now I'm going to try and hack this one here. I need to make sure I've got decent health. I'm going to feed myself with some cotton chips which i stole from the other user so and then we can come along here and right click this and they've got risk detection of 30 percent but you don't see the the items in here it's also you can have nuke viruses and stop worms we'll have a look at those in a minute i have to right click this twice so now i can left click this like that and wait till it comes along here and then left click this and right click that and we're sure enough, we should have hacked the station. Now that means then I can open this chest up here and also open up this program here. If I hadn't hacked the station, um, I couldn't do that. Now here's another station here. Uh, I have to right click it twice, by the way, and I've got the same, same logic in here. So let's see if we can hack this one. To prove that, let's try and break something around it. In fact, actually I should have shown that before this try breaking this so I can't break it because it's prevented I can't steal anything out of here because that's also protect, protected uh, the range of this one is also protected how far can we go I've forgotten how far we can go so it's protected five blocks so it's one two that's five that's three blocks and well one two three in that direction one two in that direction so everything in here is protected so I can't do anything with those or those so you see that's the square the one block behind this I can do we can break this block here. But I'm not going to. Doesn't doesn't tell me I couldn't break that whole thing, does it? Oh no, that's broken. I can't do that one. What's gonna break? Alright. 
that one you can break. So I may be in just slightly wrong position, so let's get out of here. I'm sure I can break this one to be honest with you. Yes, I can. And this one I shouldn't, I cannot break. Yes, okay. So now we can hack, try and hack this one here. Uh, in fact, it should be just about as, as easy as the other one to hack. Um, so we left click this when it's and then the diagnostic subroutine tracing failed. Oops, let's click this one here. And sure enough, I've almost died. <laughs> I have got what have I got? Blindness for three seconds, slowness for seven seconds, and my health has gone down. Ooh, it's actually back again because we had some decent food. So there's the disadvantage of how. Ooh, I'm still a bit. I'm still a bit nauseous. So there's a, that. And let's come back now as my normal player again and have a look at this station and we'll also reinforce it to make it much harder um right i'm back as my normal as you can see because i've got the different uh, armor on so this one if we right click this one over here and have a look at it you'll see it's got one security upgrade and one range upgrade and one entity tracker upgrade and you can press the r button here which shows you the range of the thing so we should be able to see blocks so everything in this area here should not be possible to be dig, dug up which we did notice in fact I'd forgotten to put one range upgrade and if I take the range upgrade out here like this and just click that again you'll see there's actually a, this is the five by five blocks um, that we, so we should, should be these should all be protected as they were in the last time and it goes back here but in this chest here I think I've got some more upgrades for this and I've also got some more network nodes in here so we can upgrade this one. So first of all, we can put in 12 entity trackers in here, I think. Yes, that's right. And we can also put in 64 of the security upgrades. And that, all this one does, it means that they, they attack, the hacker has to have the same number of upgrades in here. If he doesn't, he can't hack it. And then the range upgrades is 14 max. And those are the, the upgrades which you see show here so if we now have a look at the status of this the security levels level 64 the intruding detection chance is 99 percent and the coverage is 33 square meters um as you can see the range has gone up a lot in fact i think that worked without me having to press the range button great so the whole of the area here is is nicely protected and they can't come and access this one or this one let's have a look at this one here you'll see this one should be telling me it's got a red state. yes that's right it's got a problem one or more in, in, individuals has hacked this security station you can bypass the problem by rebooting the security station as soon as possible okay in fact i think it should be telling me who's does it tell me who's intruding no it doesn't so we can add trusted players in here so i could add the player i was just put in before that hacked it like that then the spell it right of course I think that I let's just add them and then so they're now act active. I'm not sure what the crown means on this piece here, but uh, so that when oh, we probably can delete this one because you're now highlighted. And this one they can't attack, they've basically got nobody, the only person that is me. I guess you can delete them too. I'm not sure how you do that, to be honest with you. We'll, we'll find out in a second. So the redstone behavior is also something you can do. Emit a redstone when hacked or done rebooting. So it means it's safe. So normally what you do is you put in some, I guess you put in a, a light or something when it's got redstone in it. So have I got any redstone around here? No, I don't think I have actually, I'll be honest with you. I'll just go and get some redstone and be back in a second. Okay, I've got some redstone dust. Let's change this one as well. Let's change this one again also to be when hacked and put down a redstone here and you'll should see this is lit up. And this one over here is not lit up because it hasn't been hacked. Oh, has it been hacked? Oh, done rebooting. Let's change that one to hacked. So that's now hacked. And this one is, double check it, is set to hacked as well. Now let's reboot this one here. Um, we can also set it to done rebooting so let's right click this and say reboot so this is now going to take 59 seconds or one minute to basically reboot and when it has done this this will then emit a redstone signal so now 
we, I think we, this is maxed out. And of course the program wasn't particularly complicated. You can put more of these into it, for example, like this. And that makes it much harder for the for the guy to actually hack it because it's got further to go. And there's more chance of the diagnostics um, doing that. So let's have a look at how this works. So now we've got this one set up with a trusted user and this one not. So I'm going to come out and come back in again in a second or with the other player. Right, I'm back as the uh, other player. <laughs> it's funny, it's actually quite hard to do as it happens, but there we are. I want to get some more food. Let's just go and pinch one of these out of here. Let's have some salmon tempura now, because I obviously need it after that uh, very near-death experience. Get my health back up to maximum level. So here we go. This time, I try and do that. I haven't got enough security upgrade. It also took a hit. This one here I have hacked before and I can open it. I can't open these chests because they're protected. And I can't open anything in quite a long, a big radius. So this one here. If I wasn't in this list of players here, then I wouldn't be able to open this one. So now let's have a look at this. I need to get some more security upgrades and I don't think I've got any down here. So let's just go and put some more su security upgrades into the helmet. They're not too expensive but they do cost a little bit in terms of um gold now of course i've got plenty of gold um and a, and a couple of stacks of lapis in fact i think you need one stack of lapis which has gone through the upgrade matrix in here i've got 64 security upgrades the recipe for these by the way just in case just to be complete now, so you need uh you'll need 64 of these so you need Four stacks of obsidian and four stacks of lapis lazuli upgrade matrixes and one stack of these safety tubes. The safety tubes are um, levers, that's not a big deal. Uh, pressure tubes, you'll need one stack of those, so you'll need eight times. And these ones here, you need this. So you need four stacks of gold and one stack of compressed iron to get these. Let's go and now put these into my helmet and have a look at hacking that other one. I already had eight in here. Let's put the 64 in here like this. Because anything less than 64, in fact, let's just show you that one. Well, we won't be able to hack that station. So while I go and come back to the other one, let's trundle over here. It does take a while, of course, to, to do this, to initialize the um, helmet because uh, I haven't got any speed upgrades in this helmet. Now we've got 63 here, but we don't know how many we need to actually hack this thing. So we try hacking that again, nothing happens. So you know you've got 64 to go. Let's just go and put the 64th one in here. We can do it any way we like. Uh, let's put the helmet into this one. Okay, now I should be able to hack this, or start to hack this security station over here. All right, try again. <laughs> The it, detection risk is now 99%. It tells me that. I have to right click it twice. And to get past these things, we'll need some nuke viruses or some stop worms. So let's go and get some of those. I do have some. Um, you can trade with some villagers for those. Uh, there's a villager over the other side that was giving my other player one nuke virus for one emerald, which is a pretty decent return here we've got 12 and we've got some stop worms in here i don't think we've looked at the manual page for this yet i'll say that all right click this one again so now you see i've got these here middle click and network virus to use a nuke virus on it network node to mute so let's start clicking this one here like this left click to start the hack and i can't do it until i've done this one like this so we can then do this one like this and then it hasn't started actually so we've actually managed to hack this station successfully this time um and it used you've already hacked the station which of course is the case so i should be able to open it up 
Uh, I can't open it up. Why not? <laughs> If I can hack it up, then I can open up these chests. Ah, oh, that's interesting. So you can't open it up even when you've hacked it. Okay, so and the new and these two actually stay in your know, your inventory here like that. This one, because I'm a trusted user, I can open it up. Fantastic. So there you are. So just before we go, let's just have a look at the man page for security um, station. So it it basically tells you you can protect an. Um, an area from hostile players um, so it protects all players interactions against untrusted players within the range of the device that's fine we've seen this it's based on this um, an external link here Dasus X revolution hacking system so there's a web page about oh, there's actually a video this clicks to a video here um, so the next page is that you can hack that we've been through this you can set it up here which you need um and it tells you about that the diagnostic subroutines the goal for the hacking point or um at the end of the iron registry so you want to make sure it's a decent way away then you've got the nuke virus and the stop worm i didn't use the stop worm that because it didn't start tracing my attack attempt and then upgrades as you can see you've got Entity tracker, range tracker, and security upgrades, which you put into the helmet as you've seen it already. We've seen allowing friends, that's no thing special here, and getting hacked. Um, so basically, you just reboot it once you get hacked, and here's an example of that here. And you can you can right click it to fortify the node to make it strong when you've done it. So that was a, that's a typical sort of page so you start out here and you have to go right up to this one here or this one which makes it much more difficult than the simple setup that I used and then tips it says keep your security station well concealed and well protected so you can um, protect there with multiple security stations so they all must be hacked in order to get that one um, consider active defenses like drones or security turrets a hacked security station can be made um, to emit a redstone signal and you can put additional measures like TNT under it. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but that's the security station for you. Right, just before we go, there's something you can do and you can't do. Uh, in here you cannot, I've got a smart chest and here I've got a reinforced chest. You can't put a reinforced chest into a smart chest. But you can put a shulker box in here. So what you need to be careful about, you can put your shulker box down here and then you can put inside that your reinforced chest. And I think, if we break this now, pick it up again, we should be able to put this into here with the reinforced box inside it. But you've got to be careful. And if you do that, it's highly likely you'll run, a, run out of NBT data and actually break the game completely so you don't have to delete it manually. So don't do that, whatever happens. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. I also hope you've enjoyed the series because that's the last episode of this series. I've had a massive amount of fun playing this uh, with Pneumatic After Pressurize. It's a great mod. So next time I'm going to be doing a new series and it'll be all of fabric. So until then, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.